nowadays it is. All right, uh, it is seven o'clock. We're gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, let's start with a roll call. Council Member Bertrand. Here. Council Member Botorf. Botorf. Here. Council Member Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. And Mayor Peterson. Here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, all in the room, please rise and everyone else uh, feel free to join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, I pledge allegiance to the flag, allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States, States of, America, of America and to, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation <laughs> under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Way to make it work, team. All right. All right, uh, before we continue on, um, I've got a little statement to read here. In accordance with the current shelter in place order from Santa Cruz County Health Service and Executive Order N2920 from Executive Department of the State of California, this council meeting is not physically open to the public. As you can see, we have limited council members and staff present in the council chambers during this meeting with the rest of the council called in to participate remotely. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Char Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Benjamin Thompson. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Benjamin. Uh, despite being physically closed, public, partition, excuse me, public participation for this meeting is still welcome. Your comments on any item on tonight's agenda can be sent to us by email. To send us comments, email them to publiccomment at ci.capitola.org. Dot ca dot us, and that's the email on the screen there. Identify the item you wish to comment in your email subject line. Emailed comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce that public comment for a given item is closed. Each emailed comment will be read aloud uh, for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Emails received by public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us outside of the comment period outlined will not be included in the record. Lastly, we wanna thank you for your patience tonight as we adapt to this different way of conducting council meetings for the safety of everyone involved. All right, moving forward, item two, additional materials. Are there any additional materials? Um, yes, there were six emails regarding item 7B and an updated staff report for item 7C. Great, thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? There's one minor change to item 7A. You'll note that there's a suggestion there that we would be <clears throat> approving a resolution um, associated with 7A. That's uh, incorrect. Uh, all we need to do is just reaffirm that the hazards identified in the previous resolution uh, still exist. So there's no resolution to adopt for item 7A. Okay, great, thank you. All right, now is the time for public comments. Uh, time for any member of the public to address the council on items not on tonight's agenda. Have we so far received any remote public comments this evening? We have not. We have not. Should we do our uh, 20 seconds? Sure. Hand washing. How long you're supposed to wash your hands for? Oh. 20 seconds. Very yeah. smart. Mm -hmm. They say that the chorus of your favorite song is probably 20 seconds or happy birthday twice. Yeah, yeah, that you, that's how yeah. you know how long to wash your hands. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Uh, seeing no further public comment, we will move on to city council or staff comments. Uh, so let's start with uh, council member Bator, if any comments. All right. Council member Bertrand, any comments? No comments. Thank you. Uh, council member Story, any comments? No comment. All right. Vice Mayor Brooks, any comments? No comment. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move on then. Oh, I'm sorry, does staff have any comments? My apologies. Thank you, just one brief announcement. <clears throat> I'd like to announce that Chloe Woodmansey has been appointed as interim city clerk. So this is Chloe's first council meeting. I wanna welcome her to the team and thank her for stepping up and 
time of need for the city. Wonderful. Welcome, <laughs> Chloe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. All right. Uh, we are going to move on to item six, consent calendar. All of these items uh, listed on the consent calendar will be enacted by one motion in the form listed on the agenda. Uh, there's no separate discussion unless the council, any member of the council or member of the public wants to pull an item from the agenda for separate discussion. Um, if there is a member of the council that would like to pull an item, uh, feel free to say so now. If not, feel free to not say anything and we will take that as a cue. Great. Did we receive any remote public comment of any member of the public that would like to pull an item from consent? We have not. We have not. Okay. Uh, with that, we will entertain a motion and a second for consent. Um, if you make a motion and or a second, I think maybe say your name first, and that would help us with minutes. Okay. Thank you. This is Sam. I move the consent calendar. I second the Sam. Uh, this is Jacques. I second the consent calendar. All right. We have a motion from Council Member Story and a second from Council Member Bertrand. Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Council Member Bertrand? Aye. Council Member Botorf? Aye. Council Member Story? Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks? Aye. And Mayor Peterson? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are going to move on to general government public hearings. Uh, if I could uh, make a, a quick question of our city attorney and, and city manager. If I forgot to request a future agenda item during council comments, is it too late to do that? I don't think so. Can I just jump in before we move forward to our general government? Okay. I would like to uh, request an item be placed on a future agenda. Uh, for us to consider expenditure of our emergency grant fund. Uh, it's $10,000, I believe. We set it aside. Uh, and I think that um, if we could consider um, at a future agenda, on our next meeting agenda, um, expending those funds to support our uh, first responders and the larger community response uh, during this outbreak. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. My apologies. Moving on. Uh, item 7, General Government Public Hearing 7A, update on the COVID-19 emergency declaration. Do we have a staff report? We do. Thank you, Mayor. Before I get going this evening, I just want to let folks know um, that while not all the department heads are here in the room, uh, they are participating on the Zoom call. So if there are questions for someone who's not in the room, they can address them. Uh, they oh, can be cool. addressed that way. Thanks, everyone. So very quickly, I, I'm going to do a bit of an overview. It's going to take a little bit longer than the last time, <clears throat> um, but an overview on kind of the regional situation and then summarize where we are as a city. Uh, on March 16th, the shelter in place order was issued for Santa Cruz County. That was uh, quickly followed by the governor who issued a shelter in place order for the entire state. As everyone knows, the county schools are closed at the time. UCSC and Cabrillo have suspended all in-person classes and have moved to online formats. The regional EOC, the countywide EOC, is open, and the city is participating in the countywide EOC. EOC stands for Emergency Operations Center, for those of you who aren't familiar with that lingo. As of today, we have 32 cases of coronavirus 19 in Santa Cruz County. Uh, testing has been ramping up with results from private labs increasing. And there's been one death in the county. Uh, it was a patient who actually lived in Monterey County, so it's been attributed to Monterey County rather than Santa Cruz County. Our ER um, emergency room is currently operating at a relatively low level. This is primarily due to people deferring elective surgeries and hopefully not getting in as much trouble with the shelter in place ordinance. And 911 calls are currently uh, below normal. This is some interesting data that I've found online that tracks both numbers of cases as well as people's mobility. Uh, this is showing it for the entire United States. The upper left corner of the graphic shows each state's score, if you will. A blue is an A. Um, a, a less blue is, I guess, a, a green is a B. And then the browns are getting into Cs, Ds, and Fs. Um, that The mobility is, is tracked based on people who opt into Google's sort of um, voluntary, voluntary program that sort of says where your phone has been. And it's shown below, you can see on the graph showing sort of the baseline amount of travel, the amount of 
phone movement, if you will. And then starting around March 11th, you can see, and this is nationwide data, how basically phones stopped moving around as much. There was a little bump on March, looks like that's 16th. St. Patrick's Day. On St. Patrick's Day, interestingly enough. And then on the by where we are today is, is we've seen a 40% decrease overall in mobility nationwide. This is the data for California, and you can see that the, the decrease starts a little bit earlier. Uh, there's maybe, you can also see the St. Patrick's Day bump, but you'll see that the actual drop off in travel is almost 50% statewide. And then you can see the score by counties. You can see the Bay Area and coastal California is generally doing quite well. Um, results in northern, far northern California and eastern California are more mixed. The interesting thing to think about behind this is these are the cases statewide and probably paying attention to the variability day to day isn't really the important thing. But the thing to keep in mind is, is that the goal behind the shelter in place ordinance, which you're seeing in these data that show how phones are moving around less, in theory will result in fewer transmissions of the virus. And so- oh, I could move. So- Council members, could we ask you to uh, mute your phones if, we're not, if you're not speaking? Thank you. So the upshot for Santa Cruz County and California in general is that the, the virus, by all indications, has about a six-day typical incubation period. And then I've heard that in general, it's around 10 days to, for, for people to become hospitalized. And so what we expect is around 14 days after the shelter in place ordinance is potentially when we would hopefully start to see our peak mm -hmm. in terms of overall cases in Santa Cruz County and the hospitals if these mobility restrictions result in actually a decrease in the total transmission of the virus. So it helps, I think, to see sometimes the data behind kind of these underlying decisions and what's going on and the fact that in terms of the hospitalizations, we wouldn't start to see those data yet. They, would, they take about two weeks to start to show up. Okay, so in terms of city management, um, we've implemented a partial hiring freeze for all city employees. Um, I'm just going to turn it down. You're going to try turning it down? Yeah, okay. I'm just going to turn it down. Great. Speaking. I think we're getting some crosstalk, some feedback from some of the council members' uh, uh, mics. Um, we have a partial hiring freeze. The only, only exception to that would be the sworn position. We've had a challenging time over a number of years to get to full staffing in the police department, and, and so we feel that at this time we probably need to continue uh, recruitment efforts in the police department for the sworn positions only. We have a partial EOC activation within the city. That means we're not all sitting around a table 24 hours a day planning our uh, attack, but at the same time, essentially, what I'm doing full time is managing what we're doing here as a city in our response to the coronavirus situation. We've been in close coordination with the other jurisdictions in the county and in the region, um, and we've implemented some separation protocols within City Hall just to keep those folks, the skeleton crew that's working right now in City Hall, separate to the extent feasible. And we've also been working really hard to understand and implement the new changes to sick, law, sick leave and um, the Family Medical Leave Act that, the, that Congress rolled out earlier this week. The police department, oh, we are currently staffed where we need to be. We're working our normal 410 shifts. We are prepared to sh reduce to a, or to shift to two 12-hour shifts if necessary. The threshold for that would be 10 sworn available for, do for patrol. We have one detective remaining in uh, investigations. Our calls for service have remained relatively unchanged. Um, decrease in typical calls, increase in reports of people not sheltering in place appropriately. Two new officers, which is very good news for us, graduated the academy this week and will start training uh, coming up next week. And our PD lobby does remain open with social distancing restrictions in place. Um, we continue to respond for all calls for service in the city of Capitola. We established proactive patrols in parks, places where people have been tending to gather, commercial areas, grocery stores. We've been coordinating with some of the um, oh, regional coordination on the definitions of essential businesses to make sure that we were doing it the same way as the other jurisdictions in this county and proactively meeting with key businesses to make sure that they have what they need to stay operational. 
We have had a number of special event cancellations. All these events have been canceled by the organizers, not the city. Uh, the city would only cancel these things, I think, as we were to get closer if it looked like shelter in place orders or county health orders were in place and the events couldn't take place. So Easter egg hunt, Operation Surf, Skatatola, Surfer's Path Half Marathon, uh, the Veterans Learn to Surf and the AIDS Life Cycle have all been canceled at this point. In public works, our engineering and planning staff are working from home. They have access to emails, phone messages, and they're continuing to move projects forward, inspections forward. Our crews have been divided into two separate teams. There aren't alternating week schedules to minimize exposure and, and exposure between themselves, fo focusing on maintenance of our existing facilities, enhanced cleaning, uh, and then the routine maintenance while observing social distancing protocols. Public works are open facilities in the city. We have our police department, Esplanade Street, bath, uh, excuse me, the bathrooms down by the beach, the Jade Street Park restrooms, all parks and beach, beaches are open at this point. Police department, I think I mentioned that twice. Um, City Hall is closed to the public. The outer end of the wharf, the community center and the museum are all closed. I will note that the beach has been a bit of a challenge and we forecast that being maybe more of a challenge as we move forward. We have a very small beach as everyone knows. Um, even with the weather not good, we've had challenges with social distancing there. Uh, we are examining opportunities to try to get better compliance. Um, and we will be looking at those um, either through emergency orders or through council actions at future meetings. Finance department is, is working remotely mostly. Our finance director is still in the office. They've established new time codes to quantify the impacts and track time res uh, spent responding to COVID-19. All of our accounts receivable are all working. Um, most of the payments are at this point coming in electronically, either through sales tax, property tax. TOT does come in, our hotel tax does come in with a check, uh, so we can still receive those. Thankfully, our BIA licenses, uh, business licenses and BIA assessment, which are often paid in person, um, we've already got them for the year, so they're not due right now. Um, and then the other fees continue to come in by mail uh, but we do anticipate seeing some impacts to some of those as well. Uh, purchasing is relatively not affected at this point. Um, bigger projects, the budget process is continuing to move forward. Obviously, the revenue assumptions are going to be a real challenge in this process. Uh, and our year-end audit, we have postponed for the time being. Uh, we'll be rescheduling it once the shelter-in-place order has been lifted. Uh, our planners are working remotely and they have the access to the software that they meet, need to continue to process permits, responding to calls and emails. The planning commission meeting is scheduled for April 2nd. Uh, I think it will be an entirely remote meeting where everyone will be calling in, live video for the public and then the same process that we're using for the council meeting to provide remote testimony to the meeting. Building division is continuing to process building permits and issue permits for essential infrastructure. That's as defined in the health order. Um, I won't go list them all out there, but it's a relatively broad definition of, of what is essential infrastructure. Um, not, and we are conducting inspections daily. We have really clear new protocols about sort of hands-free inspections and inspections where potentially our inspector is the only person present at the time. We do accept uh, building permit applications for non-essential work at this point, but we can't issue the permits because at this point, the the work itself wouldn't be consistent with the shelter in place order. Uh, recreation division, all the programs and rentals have been canceled for the time being and the community centers closed. We've had to sort of defer our junior guard swim test, junior guard swim staff test and the March training at this point and postpone junior guard reg registration and camp registration. And we are postponing uh, new instructor proposals until we figure out when when the shelter in place orders will be lifted. Our recreation staff is working remotely, supervisor full time. All the other staff is working five to 10 hours a week. And Nikki is working and trying to develop and look at opportunities to develop online projects for community engagement, some other so sorts of things that we can transition to and still provide some services to the community through the recreation department. The fiscal impacts I'm going to spend a minute or two on now, and I don't really have any crystal ball, but I can at least to help explain for the time being the scope of the challenge. Um, for the city, about 60% of our sales tax, our, our, our tax revenues, 
excuse me, our revenues are sales tax or TOT, that's hotel tax. At this point, I don't think we can make any projections, but we can take a look at kind of where we stand. So for the first two quarters of the fiscal year, our combined hotel and sales taxes were about 5.1 million and they came in at 5.1 million. That was our budget. So there wasn't any impact for the first two quarters of the year. And as a reminder, that's June through December of, of 2019. For quarter three, which we're in right now, that's January, February, and March, we've received actually all of the TOT for that period. Just the way we book TOT, we've already gotten our hotel tax for that first quarter, but the sales tax we won't see until May 20th. Now, if you remember, it's a 90 day quarter and we've only had the shelter in place orders for 15 days of the quarter. So I would anticipate that we will see a sales tax impact from the shelter in place order, but it probably won't be that dramatic. The fourth quarter, which is April, May, and June of this fiscal year, um, we budgeted $2.4 million in hotel and sales tax. And at this point, I think that those impacts are gonna be very significant. Obviously, some businesses are still open, um, and the hope is, is that other businesses will reopen before the end of the fiscal year, but there's essentially a $2.4 million that we anticipated receiving, and I don't know how much of it we will ultimately receive. When you look at our reserves, we have about $650,000 in general fund balance, $2.1 million in contingency, and $1.4 million in emergency reserves for $4.15 million in sort of available reserves, easily available reserves. So if you go back to the prior slide, you can see, you know, assuming that Q3 sales tax maybe misses by one, $200,000, you know, the question is, is what does Q4 look like? Do we miss it? Is it a zero there? I don't think a zero there is reasonable. I think it could be, it'll be off a lot. Is it off 50%? Is it off 70%? Is it off 30%? At this point, I, I, I can't guess. So the recommendation at this point is to accept this report and by supermajority vote, determine that all the hazards that were detailed in the resolution we adopted at our last meeting still exist and there's a need to continue action. And with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Council Member Batorf, any questions? I will take that as a no. Council Member Bertrand, any questions? No questions. Uh, Council Member Story, any questions? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I did have one question uh, for Jamie. Um, and since we're in the midst of, of budget preparation for next fiscal year, um, and we're not going to have um, any results for the fourth quarter until um, August 20th. Um, how are we going to handle, or what are you recommending in terms of budget preparations uh, that we're currently anticipated to conclude by, you know, the beginning of the next fiscal year? It's a good question. It's going to be a real challenge, I think, for me and the finance department to figure that out. <clears throat> we we publish the budget towards the end of May. So the good news is we'll get a chance to see the Q3 sales tax. Obviously the relationship between Q3 sales tax and Q4 sales tax is probably tenuous at best. But in addition, I'm hopeful that by the end of May, we will have a little bit more clarity about how long the shelter in place lasted or how long the shelter in place is scheduled to last, um, which potentially gives us a little bit more capability to actually sort of make a guess about where sales tax will be for next fiscal year. But I think the reality is, is that our sales tax, um, our sales tax and hotel taxes for next year are going to be, are going to be guesses and they're not going to be as informed by data as uh, we would like, or as we typically would expect. Okay. So it sounds like, I mean, we're going to take as much time as we can um, in this fiscal year to prepare the budget. Um, and maybe we may have to use a footnote or two. Um, okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, any questions? No. All right, thank you. Uh, so we will now bring this item to uh, public comment. Uh, now is the time for any member of the public to address the council on this item. We will go to our remote public comments. Have we received any remote public comments? I have, I do not see any. Okay. Give it a moment or two. Mm. 
when this period's over, I have a question, Mayor. Okay, sure. We're going to bring it back to Council in just a second here. All right, I don't think we got any public comment. All right, so public comment on this item is now closed, so we'll bring it back to Council. We'll start uh, with Council Member Tron. You had a question? Yes, I did have a question. Um, is the governor talking about any relief for the municipalities and other um, municipal organizations? So that's a good question. Uh, I think at this point, I have not heard the governor talk about that. You are probably well aware that the, the federal government has um, has either adopted or is very close to adopting the stimulus bill. Uh, it does not include any stabilization funds for cities with populations less than 500,000. So at this point, there's no projected help from the feds at this time. Um, oh, yes, that's correct. Samantha is pointing out, our city attorney is pointing out that there is funding that would come to the states, uh, which presumably some would come to the cities. I think one thing to keep in mind um, is that the scope of the problem for cities statewide is gonna be dramatic. And the scope of the impact on a city like Capitola, I think we could expect to be more significant than the average city because we are a, um, we're a sales tax magnet and we're also a tourism generating city. So I think it's highly improbable that the state would be able to hold us harmless or anything close to harmless in a situation like this. I think that, you know, my assumption is, is, is formula, it would be formula driven funding, probably per capita, things like that. So we're gonna have our work cut out for us moving forward unless, unless things turn around very quickly. Um, Madam Mayor, I have another question. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so some of our funding like for CIP is also dependent on sales tax like through the RTC. Um, how are we gonna be able to work backwards? So for, for funding that comes in from the RTC, I think that that's probably the most significant regional pot of funding. You know, obviously we're going to have to adjust that budget figure for what we anticipate that we would get. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what that number is, but I think if I remember correctly, we we receive around two hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars a year from Measure D. You know, we probably should be budgeting two fifty next year, two hundred. But obviously, we'll refine that number as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll continue to move down the line. Uh, Councilmember Bator, if any comments? Uh, no comments, but I'm prepared to make a motion to approve uh, staff recommendation. Was was that the motion? That's the motion oh, okay. to approve staff recommendation. Okay. Uh, okay, we have a motion. I'll, I'll second. Okay, uh, motion by Councilmember Bator, second by Councilmember Bertrand. Uh, Councilmember Story, any further comments? No further comments. Vice Mayor Brooks, any further comments? No. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Council Member Bertrand. Here. Okay, Council Member Botorf. Aye. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Moving right along, we will go to item 7B. Consider adopting an urgency ordinance temporarily prohibiting tenant evictions due to COVID-19. Do you have a staff report? Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I don't. Are you gonna? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we're bringing an urgency ordinance. I think as the council is aware. Um, the governor on March 16th issued an executive order allowing, um, purporting to allow local governments within the state to enact eviction prohibitions based on non-payment of rent. So that's why we've brought this ordinance. Many cities and counties across the state are adopting urgency ordinance pursuant to the governor's order. So that's why we've bought, brought this to you for your consideration. Um, and so I'll go over a bit of what's in the ordinance and then answer any questions that you may have. We also have a slight revision to the ordinance because um, it was drafted quickly because it is an urgency ordinance. And I think that we included 
I wanted to just correct one of the dates in the ordinance. Okay. But so far, um, with the shelter in place orders from um, the county, it, it, there's significant chance that many residents in the community will lose income. A uh, majority of households in Capitola are rentals. I can't even see this. <laughs> You want me to read uh, it, or no, can you see it? I got it, I got it. Uh, the proposed ordinance is aimed at protecting residential tenants um, who are unable to pay rent due to medical expenses and or loss of income as a result of COVID-19. That's the only thing that, that the governor's order allows. Um, and the ordinance applies to any eviction resulting from, any of, from either of these. It allows rent payments to be deferred for the duration of the ordinance, rent must be paid within 60 days after the ordinance ends. And the ordinance provides that tenants, if they are able to pay any portion of the rent during the term of the ordinance, they're required to pay that portion. Next. Sorry. <laughs> I think we're doing pretty well. Yeah, so I, I think this is going I'm, well. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so the tenant, the ordinance requires the tenant to notify the landlord prior to the rental, to the due date of the rent that the tenant will not be able to pay. And the tenant, this is required by the governor's order, the tenant must provide documentation showing the loss of income and showing obviously that it's related to COVID-19. And that's it. This is an urgency ordinance, so it requires a supermajority vote, which is four of the council four of the council members. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, questions. Vice Mayor Brooks, any questions? Yeah, I have a um, question for. Our oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Sorry, I turned you down. Let me turn you back up. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for our city attorney. Um, in relation to this, I've seen we've received some several correspondence regarding extending this to um, businesses. Um, do you have any thoughts or feedback on 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 that? Sure. Uh, like I said, different jurisdictions across the state are um, adopting different versions of this ordinance. Some are extending it to businesses, some are not. That's really a decision for the council. If the council wishes to extend it to businesses, we there are some revisions that we'll need to make to the ordinance. We should add in a few findings as well as change some of the um, provisions in the actual application of the ordinance. But the city manager and I have brought revisions today that we could add in from the dais so if the council wishes to extend it to commercial tenants we can do that tonight okay thank you I, I'm not suggesting that um, I prefer to see that at a later time I'd like to see it separate um, so that's all the questions I have now thank you uh, council member Bertrand any questions yeah I have two questions um, I share Yvette's concern about um, rentals payments from businesses. Capitola depends on those businesses and when um, times are rough, as we know in the winter time, a lot of businesses close, they can't make it. So I would support bringing something forward that um, makes it possible for businesses to um, adjust to the circumstances right now. If we have wording right now, um, it might be worthwhile for us to consider, but I haven't been able to see the wording, so maybe at a later time, depending on what the rest of the members of the council feel on this, but I'd like to move forward on that too. My other uh, question is, I notice in the, um, in the proposal, if there's any issue, um, there's a, a part in there where they come before the city council. And I was wondering how that works. Are you looking at the uh, packet, Council Member Bertrand? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't have it quite in front of me right now, but okay, th no. that's what I remember reading. No worries. Uh, in the ordinance or in the staff report? Or I'm sorry. Oh, it's actually in the ordinance. It's in the ordinance. Okay. No worries. We will find that. So maybe oh, sorry about that. No worries. Let's see. 
My apologies, I'm just taking a moment to try to find it in my packet. Uh, we are on item B. I don't, I don't see that language. I, I don't either, and I don't remember adding it when I drafted it. Could you, maybe you're thinking of, hmm. hmm. Let me see, okay. So my memory could be wrong. Um, sorry about that. It's my fault that I couldn't bring it forward. No, no problem. Um, I mean, I see a lot of things about um, uh, conditions of disaster within the city. Um, but I don't see anything about people being able to bring this directly to city council. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, that Yeah, let's move this on. Okay. Uh, it's my fault for not being prepared properly. No problem. Okay, uh, was that the end of your questions? Councilmember Bertrand? Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Botworth, any questions? Sure, I have a couple. I have to apologize. My phone, uh, I was dropped out of the conversation for a couple of the slides, so I may have missed this. Uh, but uh, my question is, is there a portion in here where it shows the length of time that the uh, tenants are allowed to pay back the funds? Yes, it's 60 it's 60 days and we're seeing if we can find the section in the order there it is it's section d on page do you know what page that is on the in the packet they should be able i'm, to I'm see looking it. at it yeah, now oh great so handy yeah my question is would we be able to alter that day if we chose yes it, it, like i said different agencies have adopted different days um i, I guess my caution to you would be that um that is something that agencies have read into the governor's order in part because it doesn't seem to make much sense if a tenant is unable to pay rent during the duration of the order and accrues however long, you know, two, three months back rent. It just doesn't make logical sense to require that tenant to pay it the day the order is lifted. And so I think the agencies are extending it 60 days, some longer, um, to kind of address that logic issue. But I think I'd be reluctant to advise that you go much longer than the expected duration of the order now, which is about two and a half months. Great, thank you for that uh, recommendation. Any further questions? Uh, I'm sorry, no, no I found that, the conclude my questions. Thank you. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, council Member Bertrand, I hear you. I'm just going to wrap it up with the two council or the council member that hasn't had a chance to speak yet, and then I'll come back to you. Uh, council Member Story, yep. do you have any comments? Well, I have comments, but I don't have any questions. I'm sorry, you're right. Time. Wrong questions. No questions? No questions, but I do have comments when that comes up. Okay. Um, uh, Council Member Bertrand, did you have another question? Because we're going to do comments. Yeah, after. I did have a question. Okay. Yeah, on their six, I, I found the, um, the, uh, the wording I was questioning. Um, under Section 5, under Waiver, it's packet page 111. Yes. Yeah, the last portion right there, it says, um, a landlord shall bear the burden of presenting evidence to support any request for waiver or modification and shall set forth in detail the factual and legal basis for the claim, including all supporting documentation for consideration by the city council. So I was wondering about how that would work. Would that be a scheduled item? Would it be reviewed by our legal? I'm just sort of trying to get an idea how that would proceed. Yeah, so that's a, a waiver provision is sort of a technical provision that's inserted into most ordinances. And what it means is uh, it, it's not exactly, it doesn't quite allow, although I suppose it could be used in this way, it's not really designed to allow a landlord to come before the council and say, this provision should not apply to me because I have 
a special set of circumstances. It's really designed for a landlord to come before the council and say, this provision of the ordinance is illegal um, and would be, as it says in the ordinance, unconstitutional. And so it should not apply. And so that's what that means. It's pretty, it's much more limited than what we usually think of as a, a hearing before the city council where some can appeal a decision made somewhere else in the city to the city council and the city council can make the decision based on the rules in your code. Here it would really just be a constitutional argument that the landlord would prevent, present to the council and it would be, and the landlord would have the burden of um, proving that he or she was correct in that argument. Okay, I got it. I thought they would be doing it in reference to some sort of action on a tenant. Thank you. No problem. All right. Uh, so if there's no further questions from council, we will bring this to public comment. Where am I? All right. Um, do we have any remote public comment on this item? We do not. We do not. I'm going to give it a couple seconds, make sure no one's hitting send right now. All righty. Okay. Uh, we will bring it back to council then for further consideration and action. Let's start. Um, if, if I oh, could, I Madam Mayor, uh, there's one, um, there are uh, two actual kind of typos in here that okay. I would like to correct. And I apologize. Um, I did draft this quickly. It's urgent. Sure. Um, and the first one is in, do you know which whereas clause, whereas clause that is? Both are in the whereas clauses several clauses down and the first change is on uh, the governor issued his shelter in place order on March 19th instead of March 20th and the second is there's a duplicative phrase to whereas is down from that um, we included that phrase again on accident and so the second uh, should be stricken and the, the revisions are shown on the screen now Great, thank you. All right, uh, council members, we will go one by one for comment. Uh, let's start with uh, council member Story. Do you have any comments, discussion? Yeah, I, I do, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, one, obviously I think this is important for us to do um, and, and certainly for residential, but uh, I just would want to encourage the council to also include uh, commercial tenants in this ordinance and, and to do it tonight. Um, I think that they come under, you know, our, our uh, um, purview of health and safety um, uh, and seeing that the city of Watsonville, the city of uh, Scotts Valley, the county of Santa Cruz um, have both included commercial and residential uh, tenants in their um, eviction moratoriums. Um, and I suspect that the city of Santa Cruz um, has done the same. Um, I just don't have confirmation of it, and that's why I didn't mention them. Um, but viewing all that, I, I would uh, I'd like to see us include commercial um, tenants as well tonight. I think staff are prepared with the necessary language to be able to just include it. Um, and I don't think that uh, we need to delay um, on those as well. I think it just provides much more confidence and assurance uh, to all tenants uh, that things are going to be held in advance and they're not going to be jeopardized or uh, penalized because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So that's my statement. And with that, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we um, uh, approve uh, this um, a moratorium uh, as written by staff, but that it includes commercial tenants as well. Thank you. If, if I may, actually, I'll if, it, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if I may, if the council wishes to include 
uh, commercial tenants, there are some revisions to the ordinance that we'll need to make. And so if it suits the mayor, if the city manager and I could have an opportunity to share those revisions with the council prior to the vote. Okay. And if the council agrees to those, these revisions would be incorporated into the vote. So the vote would be to adopt the ordinance as drafted by staff with the proposed additions. Okay, so we just, um, be, okay, so would the motion that we just had need to be withdrawn or because we just had a motion in a second where we just leave those on the floor continue to discuss and then when we come back confirm that the motion was for the ordinance as what we could do is leave them on the floor continue to discuss allow the city manager and i to um provide the revisions that we've come with and then perhaps council member story would consider amending his motion to include these revisions to the ordinance okay that works for me. Uh, does that work for you, Council Member Story, since this was your motion? It is. I'm willing to amend the motion to um, accommodate the inclusion of the language. Thank you. Okay, so, so why don't I read the language? Yeah, let's, okay, let's do that. Very okay. good. So I'll, I'll go through it. There are quite a few revisions, so I'll go through them quickly. Um, and if I'm going too quickly, someone just tell me to stop but they're all, or to slow down, but they're also on your screen. And so the first is an amendment to the title of the ordinance instead of it simply being the city prohib Capitola prohibiting evictions, it will now read Capitola, Capitola prohibiting residential and commercial evictions. Scrolling down on the second page, the um, one, two, three, four, whereas clauses, five, whereas clauses will be added. I'm not going to read them, but if let's leave them up there for a minute or two. So the council, if you could read them and let me know if you are okay with those. What these do is, as you know, an urgency ordinance must be adopted, um, can only be adopted because it is necessary for the health and safety of the community. And so what these clauses are, are findings that the council will be making tonight to confirm that evictions of commercial tenants could present a threat to the health and safety of the community. Is that it? If, oh, um, still, we're still May scrolling. I ask a question, uh, Mayor Peterson? You have a question? I do. Is now a good time? Or should we wait sure. till sure, we sure. scroll through I just want to make sure that the council had a chance to read everything that was up there, yeah. all of the additions. If you could leave that up there for a second, and then I could ask a question if, if that's okay with you, Mayor Peterson. Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is for the city attorney. When when reviewing this, did you take into account the new stimulus package um, benefits to business owners? They're, they are being offered, from what I understand, additional benefits. Um, when you wrote this out, did you take, wrote this up, did you take any of that into consideration? No, because I think I, I wrote this a few days ago. I wrote this the day before I think the agenda went out, so I don't know that the stimulus package was out yet. And re so no for that reason, but also um, I, that's really a policy decision for the council. So I, I would not have considered that likely even if the stimulus package was out. Does that, does that answer your uh, question, Vice Mayor Brooks? Yeah, thank you. I was just trying to decipher the liability aspect to the city for adding this on. And um, so Oh, I see. I, okay, I, get, I can speak to that. And that is, um, well, that's a good question, and I think the best answer is that um, many cities are moving forward with these ordinances um, with even after the stimulus package has, well, one came out and I think another one's about to. Um, so communities are still moving forward with these ordinances. To the extent that these ordinances create liabilities for cities, um, it doesn't seem as though those will be impacted by any stimulus from the federal government. Um, and the state order that gave the city's authority to some extent to implement these ordinances is still in effect with the stimulus packages. Brooks? 
further staff comment before I go back to council? No. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor Brooks. Uh, thank you, uh, City Attorney. I think you somewhat answered my my questions there. Um, we'll we'll carry on with the rest of the language, and if it if I think of a clarifying question, I'll I'll ask. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to continue to scroll. Is that where we're at, or are we done scrolling? Yes. Okay. Um, in another, in the whereas clause, immediately before the adopting provisions, we're adding again commercial to commercial or so that the clause will read commercial or residential tenant. And then we get to the actual operative language. In the purpose section, in section one, we'll be adding commercial and, so again, it reads commercial and residential tenants. In the second, in section two definitions, we'll be adding a definition of a commercial unit. Throughout the definitions section, we'll be adding clarifications to indicate that the ordinance applies to commercial and residential units. Same in the prohibition on eviction section. Same. Also in the prohibition on eviction section, we'll be adding a section of what a commercial tenant who is evicted will need to do to take advantage of the provisions of this ordinance. And those um, steps are pretty similar to what a residential tenant needs to do, which is to notify the tenant prior to the day that rent is due, pay the portion of the rent that the tenant is able to pay, and then demonstrate, and this comes straight from the governor's order, um, demonstrate that the tenant has experienced a substantial decrease in business income caused by a reduction in opening hours or consumer demand resulting from the pandemic. I think that's it. Oh. That's it. Okay. All right. So uh, with that, I'm going to come back to Council Member Story, who had made the original motion, um, and Council Member Bertrand had second, seconded that. So we're looking for if he is willing to amend his motion to now include the changes that the city attorney just read. Okay. Council yes, uh, I amend my motion to include that language. Do I need to confirm the second as well? And Council Member Bertrand, do you second the amendment to the motion? Yes, I do. Okay. So we have um, a motion and a second on the table. We'll continue a uh, conversation. So I started with Council Member Story. Uh, let's go to uh, Vice Mayor Brooks. Do you have any additional uh, comments? Yeah, thank you. I, I, um, I guess I just have a little bit of a concern with the with the new stimulus package coming out to support businesses. And I'm wondering if that's enough to do its part in supporting them um, rather than us adding this to our moratorium and opening up a kind of a bag of worms for, this, uh, for, for liability issues. Um, I'm just concerned that this will come back to, to get us. Uh, and I, I'm looking to the city attorney for some guidance on this. Do you have any suggestions? I really don't, unfortunately. Um, the stimulus package is not complete. Assuming that you're referring to the stimulus package that's being discussed now, it's not completely passed yet. It may have passed in this meeting. Um, but I know it's still waiting to get past the House. Everyone is expecting it to pass. Um, I, I, I don't. I don't know how much of what is in the stimulus package will directly impact capital of businesses that might be subject to this ordinance. I, I don't think anyone has analyzed the package that closely yet because it's not passed and it could certainly change before it passes. Um, so I, I don't know how much these will overlap in assisting tenants. Um, I, I do know that, well, I'm, I'm sorry I can't give you more information. I just haven't had an opportunity to analyze the stimulus package yet. Right. I, I'm just curious if if waiting to evaluate this a little bit further would be to the city's benefit um, if we had some more time and perhaps came back at a special meeting to evaluate this even further. Um, but I'm not sure. I, I'm interested in hearing other council members' comments at this time. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, are you referring to the um, the the SBA loans in the in the in the for businesses, Vice Mayor Brooks? Um, so, from what I've just read in in the short time that it, it's been out, is that businesses will be receiving some sort of support from from this federal stimulus package. I don't know what that is or what that support looks like. Um, what I do know is that it does leave out renters, and that's why I'm fully in support of the renters moratorium um, that we're, we want to enact. Um, it's just the business part where I'm thinking, well, they're supporting, they're getting some sort of assistance, and I don't know if it, it's necessary that the city step in, um, in addition to what the, the federal level is offering. I, you know, one thing that I can add, and again, this is just kind of based on sort of supposition, frankly, so take it for what it's worth. I don't know that the aid available to businesses under the stimulus package, I don't know the timing of that being available to businesses. Um, and an urgency ordinance would be effective immediately. And so I don't know, and I, like I said, I truly don't know the answer to this question. I don't know if businesses would be, who needed perhaps assistance in paying their rent for the next two and a half months would be able to access funds from the stimulus package immediately to meet that need. So that could be one difference between the stimulus package and the urgency ordinance, that the urgency ordinance will take effect immediately. And like I said, it's, it's possible that funds from the stimulus package could be available immediately. I just don't know. I appreciate that. Thank you. If I may also, it kind of just occurred to me that even if they receive, receive the stimulus funding, there's a requirement that you prove to your property owner that you can't pay, right? So if you're receive, receiving stimulus or that you're somehow impacted by the, by the um, shelter in place and COVID-19. So if you're receiving stimulus, clearly this doesn't apply to you anyways because you can't prove. Well, it might. It might. Or, or at least you'd still have to pay what you're able, correct? That's right. And it might. I mean, it depends, again, how much is in the stimulus package. Sure. Could you, Jamie, could you scroll back to the um, section where it shows what they have to do to make the, for the ordinance to apply? Uh, uh, there you go. Um, so if you read this, the uh, so commercial tenant must demonstrate that the tenant has experienced a substantial decrease in business income caused by reduction in opening hours or consumer demand resulting from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So in theory, um, the tenant could experience that, yeah. also get stimulus funds, and still not be able to pay rent because they have other business expenses. I think, you know, it's possible that a business could be completely I mean, near the brink of going out of business and the stimulus funds, again, I have no idea how much will be in the package for each individual business. And so the stimulus funds could perhaps allow them to pay their employees or to, you know, pay for goods that they had to order that they weren't able to pay for because the business completely dropped off. And then even after that, they that just allows them to keep the business open. And then after that, they still weren't able to pay rent. Again, I just don't know because I don't know enough about the package. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot um, of in theory in in the air right now. But I guess a, a question I have real quick, and I haven't forgotten about the other council members that still need to speak. The question I have real quick in terms of liability is um, approving this for commercial properties doesn't make us have any more additional liability if a stimulus package comes down that that uh, benefits the, res the the commercial, right? It's not like if they get the, the stimulus to the commercial properties, then now we're in trouble because we are already supporting them. Is that correct? I think it is. Okay. I'm hesitating because, again, I don't know what's in the stimulus package, um, but I think that's right. Okay. I think that's how I would think of it. I will say if the stimulus package comes out and it reads in a way that would make, um, that, would ex that would increase a city's risk for having an ordinance like this in place. My guess is the governor will revisit 
I suppose the governor would revisit his order, although I don't know because that relates to state law. I suppose a lot of cities would be revisiting these eviction ordinances. Okay. Okay. A and could we? And we could as well. Okay. Um, uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, do you have any further comments or questions? Um, I think that's all for now. I, I guess what I'm reading, it's interesting to not be able to see our city, manager, our city attorney's uh, face, so I can't really read what, what, it's, what she's looking at, what I'm reading into. Um, I think it's a timing issue, and so I guess the last question I would have is, would there be any benefit to, to um, separating these two, giving us some time to evaluate it, and come back. Is there any benefit, or city manager Jamie, um, would there be any benefit to to buying uh, to waiting a little bit longer and circling back on this? Well, I think that the longer we wait, the more information we would have. Obviously, we'd be able to dissect the stimulus bill. We'd be able to see more of what more jurisdictions had done. Um, that being said. We're bringing this forward as an urgency ordinance because action is obviously, potentially, as a policy question for the council, may be necessary to make in the short term. So we need to balance those two factors, the need for information and the need to act quickly. Yeah. My, okay, thank you. I'm interested in hearing uh, other council members' comments. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, all right, I'll, I'll save my comments until I we'll finish everyone else. Um, council member Bautorf, any additional comments? So thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I support this uh, this measure, and I'm glad that uh, Councilman Story took the time to add the uh, commercial uh, uh, business into this also, because I believe we we have a responsibility to provide protection for them as well as we do residents. They're they're pretty much connected. Um, I I see this as uh, something devastating happening to our, happening to our country. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about the stimulus pass package. I believe that no matter what the government sends out, it's not going to be enough to take care of the people that, have, that are out of work. There's a lot of people that are suffering, businesses, uh, residents. Uh, one of the statistics they released was that 39% uh, of the uh, Americans would not be able to pay a $400 bill if they received it. And I think that sends a strong message about how people need to get by. So what we're doing is not... Uh, forgiving anybody their ability to pay the rent all we're doing is making sure that they don't get thrown out of their houses they don't compound the problem of being out on the street uh making this uh covid 19 even worse so uh i'm i'm really strongly in favor of doing this whatever the the stimulus package gives i hope there's one two three i don't think that uh, they're going to probably give enough to help what we need my only concern is that I, I know that people, you know, when, when they finally get back to work, they're probably borrowing, they're going to be strapped. I, I'm concerned about the 60-day period to pay this back, and I would like, uh, I would request uh, Council Story to do a friendly amendment to extend that to 90 days. Councilman Story, do you uh, accept the amendment to your motion? Yeah, that's acceptable. Okay, and Councilmember Bertrand, do you uh, accept that amendment in your second to the motion? I accept that amendment. Okay, uh, Council. That, that concludes my comments. All right, thank you, Councilmember Bautorf. Uh, and Councilmember Bertrand, final, any, any you know, final I have comments? A, I, I sort of have a hope and a prayer in the sense, in these times we're realizing that we sort of have to work together. Um, the landlords don't want to lose their tenants and the tenants don't want to lose their businesses. And in passing this ordinance, I think we're helping the um, whole structure of our village and other businesses in Capitola have a, a hope of succeeding after all of this goes away. It'll give everyone in, 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 in this situation a chance to, you know, plan uh, in a way so that they could hold on. So this is one reason why I'm greatly uh, excited about this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. I'm just gonna make some very brief comments. Um, I am by no means a um, stimulus analyst or whatever you may call it. 
Um, but my understanding of the stimulus package as it stands now is that there are help, there is assistance for small business in the in the form of loans through the Small Business Administration that would require you to maintain your workforce throughout this shelter in place. And if you do so, um, then you can get a small business loan that will be forgiven if you maintain your workforce and hire back anyone that you let go during this time. But if you don't, now you still have an additional loan to pay. Um, other than that, I mean, that's for small businesses. There's also help for bigger corporations and tax relief and deferring tax payments and um, all this other kind of um, um, financial lifelines for the the airlines and, and the other bigger corporations. But what I'm really concerned about in this is our small business shops. I've seen one of them at least already close. It's gone. Um, we've received several notices from um, people that own smaller businesses that I don't think the stimulus is going to help them, especially if it requires them to take out additional debt in order to potentially be uh, assisted by it. So for now, I'm going to support also the, the motion to in include uh, commercial properties in this. Um, and with that, I think we have a motion and a second, uh, and let's do a roll call vote. Councilmember Bertrand? Aye. Councilmember Botorf? Aye. Councilmember Story? Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks? Hi, yes, I just want to make a final comment. Um, the reason I brought up those questions was just for clarification, and I'm by all means very um, appreciative of everyone's comments today, and I am in full support of this ordinance. So thank you for entertaining my questions, everyone. Thank Aye. You. Happy to. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Wonderful. Go team. We're going to move right along. Item 7C, uh, consider approval of plans, specifications, and construction estimate for Park Avenue storm damage repair and authorize advertising for bids. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A little bit of normalcy to our proceedings tonight. Talk about uh, something we typically do is approve a project uh, to go out to bid. The Park Avenue storm drain project um, is ready to go. We've uh, gone through quite a bit of work trying to get it approved through Caltrans, and so um, we're happy to move this forward at this time. I will mention that uh, public works construction projects are one of the exempt essential um, activities that is permitted under the current health orders. So I'll give you a quick background. Back in 2017, a strong windstorm came through and knocked down several large eucalyptus trees on Park Avenue, um, just beyond Coronado Avenue. Uh, they also heavily damaged the uh, embankment between Park Avenue and the railroad below. Uh, th this storm in 2017 was a federally declared disaster, making the repairs that we did to get it open immediately eligible for reimbursement also but also uh, work necessary to reconstruct and rebuild the road in its entirety um, we have received back in 2017 six thousand eight hundred thirty four dollars from fema that was the work that was done to reopen the road place the uh, k rails in place that you see now there so we have a few pictures here just to kind of give you a feeling you can see here's the Large eucalyptus trees, these are about 200 foot tall eucalyptus trees, multi-trunked trees that fell down um, and crunched the road. If you go to the next picture, please, Jamie. This is the trees on the uphill side of Park Avenue. Um, after we had obviously cut them, you can see there's five stems right there, five trunks of the tree that went up. They went all the way from downhill side by the railroad tracks and hit the fences to the houses up on Balboa Avenue. So it was very large trees. And one more picture just shows the road failure. Um, you can see how the road is now undermined and, and, and crunched there. So in order to repair that, we're going to have to rebuild the whole uh, slope and then rebuild the road on top of it. Next slide, please. So the, the actual repair to the road is um, goes through Caltrans um, and is funding that they get from the Federal Highway Administration. Caltrans has approved the plans and specifications and estimates and they did that in late 2019 and only recently have they given us the authorization to proceed with bidding. So that's why we're here tonight. 
One of the requirements for federally funded projects is to have what they call quality assurance and quality control reports that uh, we typically do not do on our locally funded projects. These are rather a lot of paperwork and uh, materials testing that is required. Um, we do not have that expertise uh, in in house, so we will be hiring a consultant. Those consultant costs are covered as part of the federal funding with it, so it's um, easy to include. We are currently have an RFP out for that consulting service and anticipate bringing a contract back when we award the contract in May. Next slide, please. So our schedule for the construction project is we're here tonight approving the plans, going out to bid. We will receive bids on April 29th. Um, we will come to the council either with an award account for for award of the construction contract and the consulting contract on May 14th, putting construction sometime this summer. And then looking at the finances, um, this is where we did issue a revised report because I had a slight, I hadn't corrected all the numbers in there as we were putting it together. The federal um, funds will cover 89% of the cost. To date, we have received uh, just $37,500 offset some of the engineering costs we've done. The city must cover the remaining 11%. The construction estimate for the project is $380,000. The total project cost, which is includes $52,000 in contingencies is $592,453. So what that means is the city share at 11% will be about $66,700. That's if you know everything gets spent in including the contingencies. Obviously our share will go down value wise as the costs go down. Um, as I said, the city in 2017 kind of got the project rolling with a $100,000 allocation. Um, so we would potentially would have a return of general fund money of about $33,000 coming back to the project, coming back to the city. So with that, our recommendations are to approve the plan specifications for an estimate for the Park Avenue Star Drainage Repair Project and authorize the Department of Public Works to advertise for construction bids, setting the bid opening date for April 29th. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. Um, Council Member Story, any questions? Yes, thank you, Mayor. One question, Steve. Um, yeah, I noticed this is on uh, the federal funds, a reimbursement was submitted quarterly. Uh, when do they pay? So they pay, uh, they usually take about six weeks to pay. So we, our next invoice will be going in. Let's see, with the, at the end of this month, we'll be able to bill for what our expenses to date. And then, uh, so every quarter we will submit another invoice and it takes them about six weeks to make a payment. Great, thank you. All right, uh, council, uh, council member Botorf, questions? No questions, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Bertrand, questions? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Go for it. So I'm looking at the schematic on page 116, and it seems like beyond the bike lane of five feet, there's going to be an extension of four feet. That didn't exist before. So are we widening the road? At least that's my understanding. It didn't exist before. No, that's actually just where the pavement has failed four feet back in about, you can see the picture on the screen now, uh, as we're going back and repaving probably a half of that traffic lane. So the shoulder of the road will stay where it is, um, but we are paving back more than, in more than just the bike lane. We're also paving back part of the uh, uh, traffic lane. Does that answer your question, Council Member Bertrand? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> flicking back and forth here. So in a sense, that could be a walkway because I don't think we have one right now. When we're done, we're still just going to have a travel lane and a bike lane there. There's, we're not a travel lane. Each other. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So my other question is, um, some of the work that's going to be to maintain or rebuild the slope, that goes on to RTC land, that transit corridor there? That's correct. Okay, and uh, how are they in terms of this plan? And I guess we're coordinating. I just want to get a sense of what's going on. 
So they have, they've reviewed the plans. They have authorized work within their right of way. Um, the contractor, whoever the winning contractor is, will have to get a right of entry from the, um, from the RTC, but they are in full support of the project. Okay. And just out of curiosity, what's this uh, geo reinforcement or something like that, engineering reinforcement? So that's a, it's essentially a plastic sheet that goes down as you do different layers of the uh, backfill that keeps it from sliding, and it gives it reinforced back into the hillside a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, Council, let's see, Council Mayor Bertrand, are you Council, uh, Council Mayor Bautorf, questions? Or did I already ask you? Uh, you already asked me, thank okay, you, Mayor. My apologies. Council Member Story, did I already ask you if you have questions? Yes, you did. I have no questions. Okay, so. All right, I have one. Okay. It was, it was already answered? It's harder when there aren't people yeah. here to know who I've actually already spoken with. Okay, Vice Mayor Brooks, any questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, with this, we'll bring this item to uh, public comment. Have we received any remote public comments on this item? Seeing none. We will bring it back to uh, council for additional uh, discussion and a vote. We will start with Vice Mayor Brooks. Any additional comments? I have none. I so motion to move um, forward with the staff recommendations. We have a motion. I second. Uh, we have a motion by Vice Mayor Brooks and a second by Council Member Bertrand. Um, are there, if there's any other council comments, uh, please feel free to speak now. And hearing none, we will go for a roll call vote. Okay. Council Member Bertrand. Who? You. <laughs> oh, I, I, it, I didn't quite catch it. Yes, I agree. Um, I. Uh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> council thank Member you. Botorf. I. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Carries unanimously. Thank you very Thank you, much. Uh, Madam and, Mayor. I'm sorry? Yes. I, um, before you conclude the meeting, oh. the city manager and I have realized that we believe that we did not take public comment on the urgency ordinance. Is your recollection different than ours? Or if perhaps I thought the we had. Is it in the minutes? Let me check. Okay. No, we did take. We did ask on the urgency ordinance. Yeah, I think we did on on. Yep. It, it says public comment. No, <laughs> in the minutes. So. So I as do in there was no public comment. None. Okay. Yes. Very yeah. good. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You have. All right. Yeah. Thank way you. to go. Thanks, Chloe. Okay. I'd like to be extra diligent. Yes. In these understandable, meetings. especially during these times. That brings us to the end of our meeting. Thank you all so much um, for your flexibility in the way we've, um, you know, in this new world that we're living in. Uh, please take care of yourselves, both uh, physically and mentally. And with respect to social distancing, please also take care of each other. And uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.